From Hollywood, it's time now for Bob Bailey as... Johnny Dollar. I told you, that's my name. What do you want, an affidavit? I've got to be sure. Look, you've got me out here in the middle of the jungle with a gun in my back. Don't back, turn around. And I can't even see you. You think I'd be kidding you at a time like this? Any move, any move at all, and it'll be your last. <laughs> Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Santo Tomas, Mexico. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To the Home Office, Northeastern Fidelity and Bonding, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an account of additional expenses during my investigation of the Alvin Summers embezzlement of $75,000. Item 12, two cents. Just what I figured my life was worth at the moment. Gloria Harris had taken me down the beach and into the jungle to show me the hut where Alvin Summers had been hiding out. There was no sign of him. But I heard a noise outside in the underbrush and went out to investigate. I didn't see a thing. But I felt something. A gun barrel pressing against the back of my neck. I want to talk to you, Dollar. Well, you've got a quaint way of arranging a conversation, believe me. I could do better if you take away that gun. Johnny! Don't answer. Who's answering? Johnny! Wait. Well? Be in your hotel room in exactly one hour. Look, what's this all about? You're looking for Alvin Summers, aren't you? Oh, am I? Johnny, where are you? I've got some information about him for you. Well, let's have it now. Not now. I've got to talk to you alone. Be in your hotel room in town in an hour, understand? Look. Do as I say and be sure you're alone. Alone. Okay. Now, just keep looking straight ahead. Don't turn around and don't tell anyone about this. Anyone. Understand? You make it pretty clear. I'll be watching you, Dollar. You won't see me, but I'll see you. I can believe it, mister. Johnny, please. Johnny, where... Oh, here you are. Yeah, here I am. Why didn't you answer me? I came out here looking for a guy, remember? How am I going to find him if I start shouting at you? But I got worried when you didn't come back to the hut. Yeah. That noise you heard outside, did you see anything? No, I didn't see a thing. Johnny, didn't you find anything to give you a lead on where Summers might be? I don't know. But you said if I helped you find him, you'd see what you could do about getting me a passport back to the States. Yeah, sure. Come on, let's get out of here. It suits me fine. This place gives me the creeps, all these trees and vines. Broad daylight, but you can't see a thing. I know. My imagination's still working over time. I've got that feeling we're being watched again. Funny, isn't it? Yeah, real funny. We kept on toward the beach. Gloria was fidgeting because she thought somebody was watching us. I was fidgeting because I knew somebody was. And I had a strong hunch he was the man whose long-distance phone call to the States brought me down to Mexico in the first place. We got back to the beach. I took Gloria up to her hotel and went down to mine in town. As I crossed the lobby toward the stairway to the second floor, out popped a familiar face. Hello, friend. Oh, Carson. Lieutenant Gomez let you out of jail, huh? Oh, now let's get one thing straight, friend. I never was actually in jail. Well, you're lucky. I've seen the jail. Huh? Oh, well, I, I just had to pay a fine, and that judge they got in this burg read me the riot act, but then they let me go. Well, good. So now it's back to selling zippers, huh? Sure is, and I'm behind schedule, too. Checking out right now, as a matter of fact. A lot of territory to cover. Like I always say, half, half the world... Half the world's waiting to get zipped up. Yeah, you told me. All right, Dad. Say, Dollar, mm. I'd like you to do me a favor. Oh, that little trouble I got into last night up at the Playa del Mar Hotel, I'd sure appreciate it if you'd keep quiet about it when you get back to the States. You mean you don't want anybody to know you got plastered, grabbed a serape, and did the fandango? Now, Dollar... Broke a guitar over the musician's head? Now, can't we just forget about that? Believe me, that? I had until you reminded me. Now, Carson, I'm reasonably sure we don't know the same people and won't be seeing each other again. I'd say the secret of your lurid past was pretty safe. Well, I sure hope so, friend. But about not seeing each other in the States, I was planning on looking you up. Goody. Yes, sir, I got a deal for you. Sorry, but I have all the zippers I can use at the moment. No, that's not what I mean, friend. I've been trying to get you into a cribbage game, remember? How can I forget? Well, instead, I'm going to look you up in the States and let you teach me to play gin rummy. How could I be so lucky? Oh, sorry, I think that's my phone. So long, Carson. I'll sure look you up back in the good old USA, friend. Uh, 
Hello? 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 Hmm. Keep your hands on the table. What? Oh, my shadow again. Anybody follow you? Not that I know of. You're early. I know. And I searched your room. That's become an old Santa Tomas custom. To make sure you really were Johnny Dollar. So now you know. What about it? You can turn around. Oh, no. Maybe you'll tell me what... Wait a minute. A decent shave and you'd match that photo I have in my suitcase. Alvin Summers. Yeah. I'm Alvin Summers. I don't get it. I had you figured for the man who made that long-distance call to the States that tipped me off to come down here. You're right about that, too. You put the finger on yourself? If you want to call it that. Well, what happened? Your deal goes sour on you, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sit down. Take it easy. Tell me about it. I'll turn on the overhead fan. Pretty stuffy in here. Dollar, that phone call you got just now... Hung up. Clerk downstairs must have rung the wrong room. Or somebody was checking to see if you were here. Could be. Okay, suppose you start from the top. What was that? Relax. What are you... Just one of the charming features of this room. You turn on that big overhead fan, it slams the balcony door. Oh, well, turn it off, will you? I'm kind of edgy. Yeah, sure. You asked me if my deal had gone sour. It went very sour. Oh, I had it all figured out. I was planning it for a year. I was going to embezzle the 75000 and really live, live big. Yeah. Instead of that, I spent all my time hiding. Mexico City, Cuernavaca, Tampico, you name it, I was there. Always undercover, always hiding. Did you ever spend much time hiding, Dollar? No, not much. Oh, it's a great life, great. Every time somebody looks at you on the street, you're sure he's after you, tailing you. You wake up in the middle of the night, you see a shadow outside... Turns out to be just a bush, but you spend the rest of the night sweating. Finally, I, I, I just couldn't take it anymore. The rest of my life, that way... You know, Summers, a lot of guys figure that out before it's too late. Too bad you didn't. Yeah. So, finally, I owned the bonding company long distance. I knew they'd send an investigator. They sent you. I, I thought if I could talk to someone like you, see what could be done... There's only one thing can be done at this point, Summers. Come back with me to the States. Bring back what's left of the money. Sixty thousand. That'll help. But you know there can't be any deal. Yeah, I... I guess I always knew that. Here. Take the gun. Thanks. Now, what about the money? It's in a safe deposit box in Mexico City. Here. Here. Here's the key. One thing I don't get, though, Summers. Yeah? You wanted me to contact, but you were sure playing hard to find. Well, I had to be careful. I got a look at you the first day you arrived. I wasn't sure you were the one, so I decided to come to your room that night, but then I saw somebody else coming here, so I gave up. Who was it? The bellboy. Benito? Hey. That'll be just before he got knifed. Oh, no. I wasn't the one who killed him, Dollar. I'm no killer. Just the fool who runs away with somebody else's money, remember? Anyway, I didn't have another chance to get to Italy today. I had to keep undercover so they wouldn't find me. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Who's they? (laughs) The man who arranged for me to come down here and the girl who was going to make it all worthwhile. The girl... Summers, don't... me, Johnny. Gloria. Hello, baby. Here, let me... Leave the gun right where it is, Johnny. That safe deposit key on the table. I guess you're calling them. Thanks. And it all adds up. You found out Summers here was planning to turn himself in. You didn't want that money to slip through your fingers. But Summers disappeared from his hideout. You couldn't find him, so you figured you'd let me find him for you. That's right. And it worked. And you're so right about that money. You think I'd give it up now? Gloria. Keep out of it, Alvin. If you want to go back and be a Boy Scout, that's your business. The money stays with me. Johnny. Yeah? This doesn't have to be the end of it for us. Oh. So now we get the pitch about making beautiful music, huh? I'm not kidding, Johnny. Sixty thousand's a lot of money. You know, you put on quite an act. Maybe I believed a little bit of it. 
But if I did, I quit the moment you walked through that door just now. Okay, Johnny, that's enough. I thought maybe you'd be smart, but if you won't, you leave me no choice. No, Gloria, don't. Gloria! <laughs> the balcony. Out on the balcony. Hold it! Carson. Stay right where you are, friend. Oh, shut up. She's dead. She crossed me. You and she were working against each other. She wanted me to lead her to Summers. You wanted to find him yourself. That's right. And Summers, you took a lot of findings. That's why you killed Benito the bellboy, to shut his mouth. Then you went up to the big hotel and clowned around so you'd get arrested and that way set up an alibi for the evening. I was pretty proud of that little idea, Dollar. And it's all worked out just the way I wanted it. You see, right from the start, I Carson was holding all the trumps. They were made out of lead and I knew he was going to start dealing them any second. Then I remembered the overhead fan. The switch was right next to my elbow. The balcony door was open and Carson had his back to it. What are you doing? Just turning on the fan. I need some air. Can you blame me? Yeah. You're sweating, aren't you, Dollar? What's the matter? You losing your nerve? Well, it really doesn't matter. What the... The door slammed. Carlson whirled. And I knocked the lamp off the table. By the time I hit the floor, my gun was out. I picked up the lamp and lit it again. Summers was crouched in a corner. Across the room, sitting on the floor, was Carson staring stupidly down at the red bullet hole in his side. I picked his gun up off the floor. Dollar. Summers, call the police station, Lieutenant Gomez. Yeah, all right. Help me, Dollar. It hurts. Yeah, it hurts, but not as much as it hurt Benito and Gloria. I, I... You finally got me into a game, didn't you, friend? And you lost. <laughs> Expense account item 13, double the amount of item 1, $440. Transportation back to the States for Alvin Summers and me. And you know, I turned him over to the authorities as soon as we got back. That's the way he wanted it. Gloria? Well, once in a while I get to wondering if she really meant some of the things she told me. Not that it matters. Conclusion of report. Expense account total, $923. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Remember, please, there'll be a new exciting story on Johnny Dollar beginning next Monday. Next week, the Valentine matter. And believe me, it's not the kind of Valentine you'd wish on even your worst enemy. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood, written by Robert Reif. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in this week's cast were Virginia Gregg, Marvin Miller, Don Diamond, Tony Barrett, and Parley Bear. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>